there and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kika and this is part three, which means that it's the last part of the Arctic Light Sweater Knit Along. I've been hosting this knit along for the Arctic Light Sweater that you can see me wearing here on a chair casually here. And yes, that is also an Arctic Light Sweater hanging casually from a moose's horn or moose's, what do you call them? Are they horns? I guess it's a horn, like an elk horn. Um, and I'm also currently knitting like this one in this blue color and you might have seen me <laughs> knit this in the two previous videos. Um, so this is essentially a full video tutorial series that I'm doing for the Arctic Light sweater. And you can download the pattern to this sweater in the link below. Uh, that link will bring you to my Ravelry store. Now, this is already part three, which is so exciting. I feel like time has gone so quickly and I've already shown you how to knit the yoke, all of the cables. Um, there's a lot of like really intricate, really, really gorgeous looking cables in this sweater. Um, then also how to do the body. And in this final part, I'm going to show you how to knit the uh, sleeves and particularly how to decrease underneath here um, the sleeves and then also how to do the finishing. So essentially some tips on how to block your sweater. Um, blocking essentially means that you just soak it in water and I'm gonna give you some tips and really show you step by step how I like to do it because this is something that I get so many questions from people. Oh, it's about the blocking process. So we're gonna really dive into that. Before getting into the video though, I have a really exciting uh, giveaway that I'm hosting uh, kind of to wrap this knit along up um, and also as a thank you for everybody who's participated. So I am giving away uh, three of my book, Knit This 21 Gorgeous Everyday Patterns is what it's called and I'm giving away three of these plus one uh, of the lucky winners will receive my book and then will also receive uh, one of my favorite yarns, which is from Drops. It's called Air in this really, really nice kind of rose clay, dusty rose shade, uh, which will be enough to make the Maybe Forever sweater, which is one of the absolute favorite patterns from this book. So one lucky winner will receive that and two lucky winners will receive my book and then enough yarn to make the Polar Paws beanie. So you will either receive it in this kind of off-white shade or in this really nice blue shade. All you have to do to enter this giveaway is to leave a comment below and let me know what you prefer to knit. What kind of knitter are you? Do you prefer to knit sweaters or maybe socks or do you really knit a lot of shawls? Uh, so just let me know a little bit about you as a knitter. What do you like to knit mostly or what do you kind of prefer? Uh, I am definitely like a sweater knitter. Um, I could just knit or I guess I do <laughs> mostly knit sweaters. Um, so let me know that by just commenting below. I am hosting this giveaway here on YouTube. I will also be hosting this giveaway on Instagram and in the Ravelry Arctic like knit along group. So if you want to really up your chances to win, you can go and comment in all of these platforms. I will link them below and uh, for like a triple chance at winning. Quick heads up. For several months now, there have been fake accounts trying to scam people under my YouTube video. So in the comments sections, and they ask you to reach out uh, to the scam account on Telegram. I do not have a Telegram account. I will never ask you to send me any money. So please be aware this is a scam and I don't want you to be scammed uh, and somebody's pretending to be me. So please just be aware that this is happening. I am of course trying to block them and they make new accounts, but just rest assured, I do not have a Telegram account. I will never ask you for any money. So please do not send anybody portraying to be Kodoe Kika, anyone, this is a scam and you can report them to YouTube. So just wanted to make sure that everybody knows that. All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to work the sleeves and how to do the finishing. Now, if there's something particular you would like to see, you can always use the chapter feature um, and skip to the parts or skip the parts <laughs> that you don't need to see if there's just something particular uh, you are curious to see. Now, I've already actually started working one of my sleeves. So I've transferred all of the sleeve stitches that I had on hold while I was working the body onto a needle. And I usually like to use like a circular needle, uh, 40 to 60 centimeters. 
Um, if you don't have that, you can also use the magic loop technique that I will show you in just a while. And it's a really, really good little trick um, when you are working like a smaller circumference, but maybe you don't have a cable that is shorter. So then you can always use the magic loop technique. So I will show you that. And what we also need to do here, here you can see the sleeves that I still, uh, stitches that <laughs> I still have on hold. Uh, we're also going to pick up stitches here from the underarm. So these were the stitches that we cast on when we did the body. So I'll show you that. And uh, then what we do for the sleeve is we will do some decreases to get a sleeve that has a little bit of a narrowing shape towards the end. So I'll show you how to do those decreases so you really can't see them. They're very uh, invisible and the pattern stays intact. And then lastly, uh, of course, bind off and do the other sleeve and then uh, we're gonna block it and go through that and talk about some tips and tricks um, to make sure that all of these really lovely pat uh, patterns, well, the pattern as well, <laughs> textures and cables bloom out. So the reason you want to soak your sweaters and give them a little bath, especially when you're working cables, is that they will just bloom out. So often when you've worked a cable, um, the stitches get really twisted into new position. There's all kind of tension <laughs> on them. So then when you give them a bath, that just allows that fiber to open up and bloom up. So it gives it a really, really nice finish. Um, and that is the reason why you want to do it. Uh, same goes really for color work. When you're working with multiple colors, usually the floats, so the strand that is behind the work, that will kind of tense it up a little bit and it can look a little bubbly. So then when you just give that sweater or that work a soak, everything would just flatten out, uh, <laughs> flatten out and really allow it to relax and bloom out and look just really lovely and give it just like a really nice overall finish. All right, so let's get right into it. All right, let's begin working the sleeve. So step number one is to transfer back these stitches that were on hold onto our five millimeter US-8 needle. And here I've actually already started working on the second sleeve or the first sleeve. <laughs> and I've transferred all my stitches onto this five millimeter US-8 cable. And I think this is like between 40 to 60 centimeters. So that's between 16 to 24 inches. A cable so you can use that to work your sleeve but maybe if you don't have that I mean you can also work them with double pointed needles so then you would use these and have four four to five of those but if you don't have that you can use magic loop technique so magic loop technique you work with a really long needle and I'm going to show you how you can still knit a very small circumference using the magic loop technique. So step number one is I'm gonna just untie this knot here and first transfer all of these stitches onto my needle. All right, I have all my stitches transferred on my long five millimeter cable. And next we are going to be picking up stitches here from the underarm. So these were the stitches that we cast on when we worked the body. All right, so we're gonna start picking up stitches here from the middle and depending on what size, uh, I'm working size small. So I need to first pick up and knit four stitches. You're gonna be picking up stitches starting from the middle of the underarm. And I usually like to go in to have at least two strands here because if I would just go in here, there might be this hole here. So I usually like to go in here. So I have at least two strands that I go under, bring my needle through, wrap the yarn around, and then I bring it through. So I've made, oh, now something happened. <laughs> I've made the stitch here and essentially knitted it already. And then I do this four times. So I go through here, that's two, three, and Four. And oh, now you can see that this placement isn't maybe great. So I'll actually do that again. Try to get it as neat as possible. Now, next, we're just going to work these stitches in double seat stitch. So now is actually where we start to use the magic loop technique. So as you can see, now we have way too much cable. So what we can do is we can actually go ahead and pull out some of this cable here. 
and do the same maybe from here. So you have two spots essentially that you essentially pull out the cable a lot. So you get these, let me zoom out a little bit. You get these kind of loops here and that will allow us to work this smaller circumference even when we're working with a longer cable. So now I'm just gonna continue as established. So I worked double seat stitch and now next I need to go in knit, purl, knit and purl. When you've done the double seed stitch section, the pattern says to place a marker. And I mean, this is kind of optional because it's pretty obvious <laughs> where chart C begins, but you can place that marker uh, just to be sure. And then you essentially continue as chart C. So the pattern repeat for chart C. So continue as you've been doing for the sleeves up until now. All right, so now I've arrived here where I had my big loop. So now I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna, again from here, I'm gonna pull this cable out to form again, sort of a loop. And well, actually I need to do <laughs> like that first, a loop. And then I have here two loops on this long needle and that way I can work this small circumference. And now every time you have this loop coming, it's good to be mindful here to make sure that you tighten enough so that you don't get any gaps or it doesn't loosen the fabric. All right, I've worked all the sleeve stitches and now I'm approaching here the other or the end of the round. So now we're gonna pick up four more stitches or I'm gonna pick up four more stitches depending on what size you're working, you will pick up that amount. Again, I'm gonna go in here through there, one, two, three, and four. All right, so now I've picked up stitches here and here for the underarm, so we can go ahead and place the beginning of round marker. And now it's essentially <laughs> just continuing as established. So what you need to do with these first stitches here, we want to continue in the same double seed stitch pattern as here. So uh, you essentially kind of have to trace back and be a little bit of a detective here. So here I have a knit stitch. So I know I'm gonna do a knit stitch here. So I need to do a purl there, knit, purl and knit. So I know I need to start with a knit stitch to not mess up the pattern. And when you work this magic loop technique, you do have to like move around your stitches a little bit. That is kind of part of the game. When the sleeve measures approximately five centimeters or two inches, we're gonna start to do our first decrease round. And you want to start the decrease round where you have a knit stitch first. So I'm just gonna knit or purl the last stitch of the previous round, slip my marker, and now I'm gonna do a knit stitch. So now I'm gonna do my first decrease round and I want to start on a round where I first have a knit stitch. So I knit one and then I'm gonna purl these three together. So as I would purl normally, but I purl instead three stitches together. And the reason for doing this is so that we keep the pattern, this double seed stitch pattern intact. So I've purled one and now you can see I'm gonna knit one again so it doesn't mess up the rhythm of the double seed stitch. Then just continue the entire round as normally until you get to the last four stitches before the beginning of round marker and I will show you how to decrease then on this side. All right, now I've worked my entire round. I did the decrease here at the start and now we're gonna do a second decrease, four stitches before the beginning of round marker. So again, we have a purl stitch coming up. So first I'm just gonna slip that as if to purl. Then I'll slip these as if to knit. So I go in this way, one and two. And then all these three stitches that I just slipped, I'm gonna just transfer them back to the left needle and then I'm gonna, again, take the yarn over and then I'm gonna purl these, but this time through the back loop. So I go in all the way from here, from the back and go through all these three stitches. So I purl them from the back. So I've inserted my needle from the back now. <laughs> and then I wrap the yarn around 
and then I take it through all of these three stitches and then I lift it off the needle. And then I just knit the last stitch and there you've done your first decrease round. So then now you're gonna continue just double seed stitch and work chart C as established. Um, and then you're gonna work this decrease round. Uh, depending on what size you're working, um, you're gonna work it X amount of times, but this is the same principle you're gonna use for every decrease round. So you want to start a decrease round every time you have a knit stitch first, just to keep the pattern, the double seed stitch pattern intact. So because I am working size small, I need to do this decrease round seven more times and it's gonna be approximately four centimeters apart. But check the pattern to see for your chosen size the exact amount of decreases and how many inches or centimeters you need apart. All right, I have now worked my entire sleeve. So I've done all of the decreases here at the underarm seam and now I'm going to be switching to these double pointed needles to do the final cuff rib so that is just going to be worked in twisted rib stitch so you're gonna knit one through the back loop and purl one and do about 18 rounds um, I think I did 20 rounds because I wanted it to be a little bit longer and then just bind off using the Italian bind off method that I showed in part two. So if you want to see a tutorial on that, you can go to part two. Um, it's essentially exactly the same technique. It's just a little bit of a smaller circumference. So here I can just go ahead and remove my beginning of round marker. And then here you also do some decreases for the cuff depending on your size. Um, you have to check the pattern <laughs> to see how many decreases or what kind of decrease pattern you're gonna do. For this cuff, you can obviously also use the magic loop technique if you don't have these double pointed needles, or you can use a um, needle with a really small circumference. I'm pretty old school, so I really like to use double pointed needles. I feel like um, sometimes when I do with this kind of a cable, if it's a little too big, I might knit a little looser. So then for my cuffs, I often opt for using double pointed needles instead. I have one little tip. When you work with double pointed needle, often when you knit socks, for example, you will usually have four double pointed needles. So you'll have your stitches on four double pointed needles, but I actually find that it makes it a little quicker if you have them on three double pointed needles. So I'm actually just going to transfer my stitches on three double pointed needles that I'll be working with, because then I have one less needle that I have to change between. All right, there I have, now I'm ready to work the cuff I have my stitches there. So you can see, I'll show you the shape of the sleeve so you can see it goes quite a lot in so here's where we started oh i have a little hole there so i need to fix that i'll just use some thread to weave that hole in and you can see really that it decreases nicely and <laughs> steadily and now i'll work this cuff so i've already worked my first sleeve so you can see here the cuff you take additionally a little bit more in and that will just create a really nice shape all right, I have now done my rib cuff. So now I'm going to be binding off using the Italian bind up method. So I'm just gonna grab a tail here long enough, approximately three to four times the circumference. And then just using a tapestry needle to bind off. Now you can find a full tutorial on how to work the Italian bind up method in uh, part two of this Arctic Light video tutorial series. So you can check that out for a full tutorial. exciting moment has come. I have finally finished the sweater just uh, this morning. I finally finished the second sleeve and now my blue arctic light sweater is done. 
but there is still one more little phase to so the finishing phase so I've already weaved in all my ends but now I'm going to block it and blocking essentially just means that you soak it in water um, you can also then when it's wet uh, kind of block it in place by using these little pins and kind of stretch it to the measurements that you want I usually just block it by soaking it in water and then I will just lay it dry flat and then I'll shape it a little bit while it is still wet of course, this is totally optional. The reason um, I like to do it, and especially for like cable work sweaters, is that they will just bloom up uh, a little bit. So they will just lay a little nicer and flatter and everything will just like, I don't know, they will, like, the stitches will relax um, and change a little bit of their appearance. Now, of course, sometimes maybe you want to have that three dimensionality. So then, of course, you don't have to block this and you can kind of skip this step. <laughs> and sometimes you can also steam block them. So that just means that you will take a, uh, for example, a kitchen towel like this, uh, soak this with water, squeeze out the water, and then you would place that on your sweater and then use a hot iron and then just gently press it. So there's like a lot of steam and that will also help open it up without having to do the whole soaking process. All right, but I'm going to take you through the whole thing step by step because this is something that I get asked so much, so let's get into it. I am just going to use our kitchen sink, but before I do anything, I really want to make sure that it's <laughs> clean, so I'm going to clean it first. All right, the sink is clean, so now I'm going to be using a lukewarm water. So you might want to check the banner on your yarn, but I usually like to use like cold to lukewarm water. So I'm just gonna fill this sink with some lukewarm water. Okay, that's about enough. And then I'm just going to gently be placing my sweater in the water. And you really want to make sure that all the fibers get properly absorbed by the water. So that means you will probably have to squeeze them a little bit. And you can see these little air bubbles coming out when you squeeze it. And that way you'll just make sure that all of the fibers are properly soaked and absorb that water. When you make sure that all the fibers are properly absorbed the water, you can leave it there for 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, some people leave it even longer, but I find that 10 to 15 minutes tends to do the job. All right, I've had my sweater in here for approximately 15 minutes. So I'm gonna just drain the water out. And this is the phase where um, you have to be a little bit careful. So when you are drying the sweaters, you want to get all of this water out of the sweater. You really want to be mindful to be squeezing and pressing. So no wringing, no stretching. We really want to make sure that we don't damage it because when it's wet, it's very prone to you know stretch out and grow. So what I like to do first is I just kind of press out the water and I kind of go through the whole thing first, like pretty, I take big chunks and press out the water and then I move into like smaller and smaller areas. Wool is a great material in the sense that it can hold so much of moist and water um, in itself without actually feeling wet. Um, so there is a lot of water <laughs> to get out of here. One other uh, quite nice benefit of blocking, blocking your um, sweaters is that they will usually um, soften up a little bit. So if you, for example, ever worked with um, Icelandic wool, which can be quite coarse, um, blocking that and maybe using even a little bit of wool detergent, so detergent that is specifically made for wool, that is quite important, um, they will usually soften up quite a bit. So that's quite nice. All right, now I think I've squeezed out as much water as I think I can manage. Um, next up, um, when you are now, because now we're gonna dry it still, we're gonna roll it into a um, towel burrito. Now is also where you want to be mindful. So you want to carry your whole little package like this. So really support the waist, the waist, <laughs> the weight, so nothing gets stretched out. So when you are taking it from your sink to your towel, carry it like a little baby. <laughs> I'd like to do is to kind of tap like if there's something that I feel like is a little too big I kind of go around and tap it a little bit because um, it's quite easy to stretch it out but 
um, maybe there's are areas that you feel like have grown too much and don't be afraid um, at this point it might feel like oh my god it has grown so much but that will all like spring back together um, when it dries so I've at least had sometimes especially with like super wash yarn it can feel like oh my god this is a catastrophe but don't worry when it dries uh, all of that yarn will kind of bloom up and it will fluff itself up a lot um, so that is going to be fine my friend all right now we need another towel and we are going to roll this baby up then I like to stomp on it pretend I am stomping wine <laughs> and really get as much of that water out as possible before I lay it to dry flat Okay, the final step is to, whoa, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> the final step is to lay your sweater to dry flat. So I actually really like to use uh, one of these kind of, I don't know what you call this, but this thing where you dry clothes and we have a fan or this uh, pump <laughs> that pumps in warm um, air. So I really recommend to find a spot where um, there's warmth in your house or if you have a balcony where the sun is shining or if you have a sauna um, to find that spot and then I'm going to be carefully placing it on this or I mean you can just do this on the floor and actually uh, put it on instead of putting it on a towel um, I recommend putting it on for example a garbage bag or something plastic because that will uh, force the water out of it uh, if you place it on a towel, that will just absorb the water and then it will kind of stay damp. So that will actually make it dry slower. This has at least been my experience. Um, or if you have like those kind of fancy, like there are actually like these uh, things to block sweaters that you can buy. Um, but now I'm going to be carefully just placing it here and place it kind of in the measurements that I want. I noticed that it has grown quite a bit but I actually like that because I really would like it to be quite comfy and kind of oversized and I also feel like when I knitted this this time like I my gauge was I think a little bit looser than the first time and this is something that can happen mm, when you are a knitter <laughs> sometimes you just knit looser sometimes you knit a little tighter I feel like lately like I've been just knitting looser maybe haven't paid as close attention or maybe I'm just more relaxed <laughs> So now I am just placing it carefully here as I want it to be. I um, don't know if I should take these flaps out. Maybe I'll take one flap out. Then I'm definitely going to come and check on it every once in a while and just make sure that <laughs> everything is going to plan. So carefully, I mean, this is really the part. You want to spend a little bit of time here. And usually I like to, because the sleeves can grow quite a bit. So here I usually try to instead go the other way so to not add necessarily that much length to them but instead make sure that I have enough width all right and then that is really it so usually it takes like at least overnight um, to dry and then you can try on the sweater Hello and welcome to Japan. We are standing in the middle of the most gorgeous park, but it is pouring down with rain. And I have brought my finished Arctic Light sweater all the way to the other side of the world. And today is finally, it's pretty chilly outside. So I am wearing it and I thought I would take it on and show you the final result. Uh, so I blocked it at home and packed it in my bag and I am so so happy with the color for some reason uh, I think I told you before I think I knitted this a little bit looser so it's a little bit oversized but I actually really like that and I like that it's also a little longer so I can tuck it into my jeans a bit like this if I feel like it uh, but overall I'm very very happy with this project and I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial series I will keep the full knit along here on my YouTube channel even though uh, officially, the Needle Log Challenge uh, was only from February to March 2023, but as I said, I will keep these tutorials here, so if you want to try to make an Arctic Light sweater later, you can still do that, and as always, you will find the link to the pattern below, uh, and that will take you to my Revelry store. Alright, we are going to go and 
try to see if we can find uh, some breakfast soon. Enjoy uh, beautiful Japan. Um, it's been, we've been here now for like a week. Uh, still have a couple of days. We're going back to Tokyo today. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye.